Mm-hmm. So it was just these few whiff cookies where he was looking the wrong way, like, ah, teething issues. But by yeah. game two, it's like so simple that they'd figured it out. It's like, oh, me go smash hero. Cookie allow me to reach. Good. Really curious to see what Viking picks here. This Doom pick is quite quite strong, but it's so vulnerable in lane. Like this this Doom clock lane is not very strong, I feel. Especially uh Oh, Invoker. Alright, so that should be pick. Boom's hero, which means we uh, could still have Toby Snapfire here. Yeah. I I like the the Invoker. It's really good at uh, halting the aggression that five men want to put out with the doom and uh, the clock. Mm-hmm. Gives you reach as well. Like you can actually get in on the draw ranger, right? Split the fights, control long enough that the follow up is there. Also, also, doom's initiation is kind of ruined by invoker. Yeah, and also of course the the classic invoker void combo, the cataclysm coming down. Pretty much, if you guarantee you you win the fight, if you hit a three or two man chrono. That's true. I think that was the go-to combo when they changed the Ags on Invoker. Like everyone was instantly picking Invoker plus Void to see if it was good enough. Um, it seems pretty, but doesn't necessarily have the biggest impact. But the difference in this game, right, is like you have that later on, but in the early fights you have this snap fire with the Void. Especially considering I'd expect this likely to be a Quaswex Invoker, which means we'll probably also see Void focus more on how he can kill heroes as opposed to survive in these fights. I think uh, Viking is expecting this to be a mid-doom by the looks of the bands. So I'm curious to see um, five men are going to go for here. They ban all Toby's heroes out, so if this, this Snapfire is actually plus three, it's quite a curveball they threw there because they wasted three bans on Toby heroes. I mean, still t- there's still the potential, right? Like, I-, I don't think I've seen Aramis picking up the Snapfire too much. You can run it as a four. We've seen it already from Ninjas in Pajamas yesterday. But I wouldn't be surprised they just ran out of POS4 here. Like, this isn't an unusual way for teams to draft at the moment. I would like to see a melee frontliner in this pick, at least, though. That is a yeah, that's melee frontliner. <laughs> I don't think there's many that cl- uh, classify more so than a melee frontliner. <laughs> We, we see this a lot at the moment, the Drow versus Chaos Knight matchup. It, it's kind of deceptive, right? Like, if Drow's ahead, sure, but when you're even, Chaos Knight can just melt you. Yeah, I think five men should win that safe lane, but uh, I think Viking have more kill pressure, in a way. Because, like, if you get the jump, right, this, this Drow is quite screwed if the, the Chaos Knight gets on top of her with a cookie. Well, the, the problem here is... Is this a faceless void free? No, no, no. This is a a Toby. Toby okay, CK. this is yeah, okay. It's going to be Toby CK. Okay. So in that case, they run the snap fight. Yeah, I think you're right. Like it shouldn't be that hard to catch the draw either. That's the other worrying part. Like you drag in, you have cookie follow up, dead. And it's yeah. what I like to see as well, which is whenever you pick snap fire, your power spike on the lane shouldn't be level three. It should be level two. And Chaos Knight has that with the drag in plus stun or the crit plus stun. And also a natural halberd builder against the draw is always nice to have, right? Mm. Like I expect to see the agonims this game as well that uh, people have been doing. Like the, it's it looks so good. The the AOE phantasm it oh, just creates yeah. so much chaos, especially against low armor heroes like Doom and Clock. Yeah, it's definitely been something I think people kind of been skimming over. It's nice when you have a lineup that uses it well. So for example, if you had other heroes that benefit, like you benefit from their illusions. I'm not sure if we'll see it in this game just because it's, you know, it's a snap fire and invoker, a Chen and a, a void. But TA to round it out from five men. So definitely feels like they're leaning a lot of pressure on Chessie's performance in this mid lane. Yeah. I feel so too. I, I think this game gets really rough if Shad is able to pick up a lot of farm and is able to get a Scotty. You have two range scores against a Scotty. Like it's going to be super hard for them to play the game. So Chessie needs it. They need a good start on Chessie. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned this Heaven Halvers before, right? We've already seen Shad is willing to go for that if the game requires it, even on a faceless void. He also does have those combos in Chrono, so he doesn't have to be, you know, the be all end all de facto damage. But as you said, Toby could build disarms as well. Uh, maybe even a Snapfire in the post four roll, we could see you just kind of sneak over. Because when I think a Snapfire, like a Glimmer Cape's nice. We saw an Ags is really good. 
but this hero isn't really shackled to the I need this item to function like some possible such as Shaker. Yeah, I really I really prefer Vikings draft in this game. I feel like uh five man draft does not have like a clear plan in mind. When I look at it, it's like I see these heroes and it's just like well, we have a lot of damage, but how are you going to play the game? Well, with with Viking, I I can see like more of a game plan. Hmm. I feel like what I'm seeing here is a situation where you're like, yeah, we jump in, we initiate. Ace is just attacking from the back. And they go, wait, wait, why is Ace not firing arrows? And you just look across and it's just him trying to juke and jive the snapfire kisses or maybe like a faceless void chasing him or even a Chaos Knight running after him. We'll see how it goes. I mean, in fairness to them, they do have saves right they've got the these hookshot potentials to like carve the fights they've got the oracle as well we can never underrate that and likely we're well, gonna see the hurricane pipe build coming out from ace yeah probably i think it's just gonna be very hard for five men to take fights this game so they're there i think they're gonna have to capitalize on smaller skirmishes mm -hmm. where they Makes can like, the heroes as well yeah where they can maximize their damage potential which yeah. is lot. Yeah, it's definitely understandable. Like when you compare these two drafts, even though there's a doom on five men, if you, if you told me to say something that differentiates these two, one is cooldown reliant, the other is just kind of go. My only concern is the cooldown reliant side don't need to blow all those cooldowns to win a fight convincingly. I look at Chad's starting items. He realizes he's against a weak lane and that they can punish. Mm -hmm. He's starting that orb of venom. Steve has just gone for the extra ring of protection. Might regret not actually bringing ring of regens as we see more often on Dooms at the moment. Adam is just pulling a Yapsor with this, uh, this build. Starting with the Bracer. Not just him. That Bracer buddies in this lane. Look at Toby. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're like, yo, we're going to get hit in the face a little bit, but who cares? Pile I die, you know, we need to focus on the last piece of his name in this lane. Yeah, I would really like <laughs> to five, not see like five men contest this top run. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> like, we wouldn't like to. Bye. <laughs> and that's actually going to be three runes going the way as Viking as a result, because like you mentioned, that weak lane means they don't even want to try and contest against the faceless void and the Chen. Yeah, and Chen didn't even skill anything yet, so he can just get get the divine favor early and just start sitting in the lane, being a heal aura for uh, for Shad. Mm -hmm. and you know that the Doom's not really going to do anything to you level one because well, it's a Doom. He's always going to take devour. There's not a single example you can give me where a Doom should be taking anything but that skill. I'm a bit surprised that Boom's even able to get one deny at the start of this lane. Then again, he did go pretty stat heavy on his start nines. So he hits relatively hard at this stage. Meanwhile, Boom kind of struggling in the first few waves, which is to be expected. You say that. Yeah, but uh, I mean, he's pushed into his tower, so it's. Yeah. That's a nice little play there. Actually, stopped the deny coming out with the cold snap. So it ensures that he doesn't fall behind XP wise. And that's the most important thing. When you go for this Quas X build, like you just need XP. Gold is nice, but it's about surviving the lane of phase more than anything. Yeah, exactly. And I think this stop lane is going to be the most action packed lane, probably. Oh, baby. Like this this, uh, this level two power spike of uh, Aramis and, uh, and Toby is going to be quite, quite strong if they go for the all in. Mm -hmm. Whereas you compare that to five men, it's the same issue we see with the, the Beastmaster Rubik we were talking about earlier, where it's like, this combo that requires level 3. Like, Drow plus Oracle doesn't scare you that much until level 3. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just a bunch of harass because they're two ranged heroes. Oh, if, if you've got double braces, mal tickling is the correct choice of words. <laughs> and Pi, I think he knows this. This is why he's going to try and stack and get ready to pull. He just needs to try and actually slow down any sort of aggression, curb it off maybe. What XP and gold come away of Icons? So. Yeah, you'll let them reach level 3, but I don't think you're too freaked out by it. 
this is the upside of playing uh, Invoker against the TA, right? Especially mm -hmm. class Vex, you can just regen up the, the harass that you take from the side blades. Yeah, this isn't... No, no offense Supreme, uh, to Chessy, this isn't a Supreme TA. He's been the most scary person so far in this tournament, just completely destroying his opponents with the side blade hits. Uh, Boom's been doing a good job of dodging at least half of those. Yeah, it also depends a lot on the matchup, I feel like. Uh, yeah. Invoker is a pretty, has pretty long attack range, so he doesn't have to be in the range for the side blades of most of the time. He is an incredibly slow hero, right? Which is why we're seeing him take a few hits there and like that. Yeah, and then again, he has like dangles and double plus, so he can just sustain, which is nice. So this lane is quite even. Mm -hmm. I, I expect Chessy to pull slightly ahead in uh, XP. I mean, uh, lost hits. It's a given as time goes on. Like the thing that Boom's doing really well is he's bleeding as much mana as it costs him, right? So Chessy, you know, he's getting these refractions occasionally, but I think that's the second or third mango so far, which is just slowing down any progress towards some like a ball if you wanted to go that route. Yeah. Exhibit yeah, like... is losing. His... This is the second time Exhibit lost his career. And... He's just trying to high five. He's like, yo, you're going to leave me hanging? I mean, I'm having a great series here so far. You see, last game, guys, I completely destroyed you. As you said, Exhibit is definitely not happy at the stage. At least he gets to level three, so that's where you shouldn't feel too pressured on this lane. But the problem is, like, when do you pressure the faceless void, which is more important? Yeah, I think only at level 6 on Doom they can start pressuring the Void. Even then though, it's hard, right? You can't rely on the Doom damage, you have to be able to stay on top of him and you're up against a, a Chen. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, the Chen can just... Like, especially if they, the Chen hits level 6 at a comparable time to the Doom, so that when he gets his opening, there's the Hand of Weld available, it's super hard to kill this Void. By the way, look at Pilot die. He know he knows something's gonna happen soon. He's stocked up on subs. He's like, don't worry, Ace. If we both almost die, it's fine. So far, they've been doing a good job of not giving any opportunity over to Viken. But that does mean you're forfeit and CS to the CK as a result. You can see that yeah. with 19-7 to the 13-2. They're really suffering in that top line. Just because they're so scared of the kill pressure coming out. Which is scary because then that's even more pressure on Chessy, like we were just talking about, that he has to have one hell of a performance this game. Meanwhile, top. There it is. We were waiting for it to happen. Palai died. They knew he'd try and come and get a rune. What bot? This is kind of pitiful to watch. I mean, like you said, we have to wait for six. It's tough for Misery as well, right? Like, it's not easy for him to rotate on the mid against an Invoker. I mean, that's probably the best rotation he can make. Oh, and Chessy just lost all his mana. Does he have a bottle coming out? No, he does not have a bottle coming. He's not a bottle. Yeah. I mean, I guess you understand, like, like bottle is good when you, you're burning mana and health, right? But you're not really being pressured directly. Ace in the top lane is feeling pressure, though. As they move in. Scab blast onto two, so Ace can't run away. Fairy fire to try and stay alive. Salve as well gets cancelled. TP up. Oh, no, this is Salve! Salve! Oh, oh no! <laughs> I mean, I was saying Parlay died very smart. He'd prep for this moment. Yeah, you keep Ace alive, but he's not even worth it at that stage. He's barely alive. Yeah, now Viking just resets and they keep the pressure up. Like they see misery rotate, so you take a, a bit of pressure off from the void as well. Shad is having the time of his life in this bot line. Mm-hmm. And he's got every right to be going towards this Midas. It's not really a game in which she's going to feel pressured early on. Especially when Xebe has to go shopping in the jungle. Does end up getting the ice armor, but... I mean, I don't, feel like that, I don't feel like that was the issue this lane. They're not really ever trying to kill you, per se. It's just you need some way of killing them. <laughs> so <there is laughs> oh, yes, the purge group and the, oh, and the slope. Oh, no. Yep. Okay, Chad does not want to go aggro yet. Oh, oh, he's coming now. He's picking it. He's like, get oh, him. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Right now. Pound him in. Let's oh, see. There if the oh, there goes your goes. There goes your frost armor. Well, <laughs> nice defenses you got there. Hoop as well. He's like, oh, please, no, no, God, no. Look what else is coming over to play. Little hell bears. It looks like he'll be able to get away with this, but a little preview to him that this is not going to be a fun lane, even with that much defense. And boom. He's going top, by the way. So. 
Identifying that Chessie isn't going to pressure. He just wants to farm jungle. They were trying to see if they could find some opportunity to draw, but I don't even know if you need to be here. Ace feels so defensive already. Uh, I always feel kind of weird watching uh, TAs because it, it, it's kind of like a Magnus, right? They, they kind of hit similar timings, like the Magnus with his Echo Saber and TA with their Tesso. Mm. But, but then, then they, they trade doing... some things, right? Like TA yeah. has the means of going to Roche early, whereas a Magnus is like, I can fight big team fights early. Yeah, exactly. So like TA is more like objective based and slightly more dominant in the lane, whereas Magnus is uh, far better for team fights and scaling. And I kind of feel like you, I want to say you kind of want a Magnus preferably in this game in terms of like that type of hero that can do that, right? Because if your Doom isn't fat, like, who's controlling these fights? Who's dictating the flow in those engagements for you? Celery? Oh, oh give me Chessy when he finds a haste room like this. Oh, oh there goes. He's going to be punished oh. right now. Chessy needs to be careful. Refraction is going to be popped. Chrono is going to go down. Xebe, he's trying to weave his way around to assist here with the Frost Shield. Might be enough to get him out. But these bashes from Shad. No time off for eight seconds. Nice body blocks as well from Sebe. He needs to be careful himself. They're still chasing. Refraction does get renewed. Cookie Ford, boom, trying to stay on top of him here. And Chessy. Able to move away. He still has cold snap coming up. Uh, yeah, but he can't reach. Back. He's way too slow here. Whew. That was the chrono used, so all things considered, when you check yourself for bullet holes and you notice you still got a pulse, five men are going to be happy with that. Oh, Misery, probably not as happy. No, it's a slow rundown. He shouldn't die here, though, because cold snap was already used. But he's just boom. He's like, get the hell out of my lane. You think you can just come here and freeload the XP? Get, get out. It's kind of big though. Misery is pretty close to his level six. So like forcing him out of the lane and off the map for a little bit is quite big. Delays the the hook shot rotation a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Aramis uh, was have... trying to snipe him, but he he wasn't trying to come back for more XP. So I'll be happy with that. Maybe not if Aramis dies here. Luckily, you can cookie away from roots. He might just cookie straight into him here though. EMP. Sides against it, though. Yeah. Uh, I expect uh, Misery to try and go mid with this level 6. Mm, he says, shut up, Marino. I'm going top. Yep. He's like, oh, there's a free wave right there. I'm going to yep sort out. Mm -hmm. Screw waiting for the tomes. Highlight I needs that. We need our saves. Doom used Botline. on bottom. Yep. Uh, I'll tell you, he needs a save right now. Shout oh, and <laughs> And the TP out. Aramis won't make it, but he's happy with that. Uh, that's support work for you. Not the way you always want it, but they sure as hell give you what you need. Meanwhile, Toby actually having quite a free lane up there. He's queuing up the, the armlet, so he's actually transitioning to be a damage dealing core. Instead of a more utility. Identified that he didn't need to be pressuring early, right? Like the, the inherent pressure of these two heroes together snap far. Chaos Knight was enough that he could just go for the greedy passive max out build and misery. Uh oh. He's like, wait, I've got way too much mana. This is bad. Nicely for him, the cogs will push boom back. Tornado will be sidestepped as well. As misery did not go to the previous school of running away from things, he will get away. And they got a catapult wave, which is quite nice for Viking here. This, this top push. If they manage to hold this bot tower with it, because they don't have Doom. Which they will. Yeah. They, 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 they want more than holding, though. They see the Chessie's here. Boom is ready. EMP is going to come out. Cold Snap as well. And Seabay with a two-second stun, locking him on the spot. Even with the drums, will he be able to get away? They need to use the Chrono. They'll do it. At this point, yeah, any kill is worth it. Any kill. You hold the tower. You get the top tower yourself, which opens up the dire jungle. So which Celery is taking right now. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> But I would, I would expect uh, Shad probably to start rotating top now. Um, one, like he's gonna farm jungle and then he's probably gonna rotate top, so he's the, the jungle to play with there. Oh, by the way, he's doing the envy way. <laughs> the double. I mean, uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's gonna get value out. Of him. He's gonna use them both, right? I, I say envy way. I think envy was the one that done it to the most extreme. I recall a Wraith King game where I think he built three gloves of haste. Yeah, one for the Midas, one for the armlet, and one for the dreads, I guess. Yeah. But apart from the fact that he didn't build an armlet. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, kisses in the bot lane. Toby's going to have to stand and fight. Misery. Oh, no. That was not the fight you're looking for. He's got the false promise. Toby looking to escape now as the damage is too high. Cookie will get him out. 
Misery might die. There's a lot of damage coming out. Toby going to be ran down. Has got the one, so Xibe has to walk away. Misery and he has to Ah, oh, yes. And now Pilot I needs to be careful. <sighs> oh, it cancels the yep. They got yeah, the self. He's like, okay, that's that's enough, guys. <laughs> We're leaving. Yeah. Doom being up means that they have to forfeit the tower. But um, it, it costs the five man quite a bit of time and pressure to get the tower. Which alleviates the other space on the map. You can already see Toby's taking advantage of that, going towards the top now. Armor almost complete, and then he'll be ready to brawl as much as need be. Meanwhile, Salary gets a joyous re reunion with his creeps. I would, I would expect uh, Salary to try and secure like vision in the dire jungle right now, just so that they can play top a bit more aggressively, um, especially considering that their space on bot is being cut. But but the creeps. <laughs> the creeps are pretty pretty dank. Okay, his farm. I mean, he's already got the mech online. It's a lot of sustain now. And the worrying part is like five men. They kind of have this gap, right? Where once Desto is complete, it changes a bit. But especially Doom. Until we get that level two Doom, it's very hard to just instantly walk in, Doom a target, and kill them now. Yeah, when we look at the net worth, it's also just like, of course, it's gonna be TA on top. I mean, she's not really being contested, but it, this is not the best Desto timing I've seen. Oh, Usually, I die, like, by the way, on top of the death cam right now. What up? What up? He was just trying to get some vision. Oh, they don't see this, uh, the the oh. oh, fireplace. No. Oh no! I mean, this is more common these days, right? Because it's such a predictable spot, and the sentry vision is so small. Uh, I, I expect Shad to die because of this. Like, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> premonition incoming. Two minutes from now, Shad is gonna go splat. Yeah, because they they see the entirety of Viking. Unless Aramis somehow actually sees this ward. He can scatter blast for vision. So. I'm surprised they didn't do that. I like how they have the dummy ward as well on the, yeah. the stairs. So if they, if they get one, they probably won't expect the other. And they're staggered as well. So it's not like it's just, a, you know, you're wasting two wards at once. What this really I... was, was Pylai Dai slowly moving into enemy territory. Like, is it safe now? And it doesn't oh, look safe for Shad. They got the Doom out. They have got the hand of God. I don't know if they're going to be able to save him, though. He's way too low. Midas off cooldown as well. <laughs> and there Game we moment. go. Punishment's had in return as they do find misery. And they really need to take this tower to make it worthwhile. Otherwise, that's a really good trade for five men. Oh, the Corey as well. And they get it. That's pretty good. Like, they got a catap catapult wave coming. Doom's down. I, I don't think uh, five men can fight this, actually. The Desso is online for the TA, though. But it's going to be kind of... Kind of rough to go in. I mean, the face is always up in 10 as well. That's the other danger factor you have here. Me a little bit too hard, and you're going to find yourself getting spanked to the noise of a bash pretty hard. Yeah, but I think Boom needs to be careful. Hook shoulders up. He's quite far forward now. Aramis is already disengaging towards the top lane, trying to push that in. He's a little bit more tanky with this drums build, though. So not the easiest target to just melt through instantly. Hook shoulders! Oh! Oh, they uh, tried. They tried to time that. We're getting rid of the creeps so they'd have a clear shot. But they're going to try and push in now anyway with the catapult. Phantasm on the side. Toby trying to drag him in. Drags him out of the cogs. And misery in trouble. These crits, though. Able to get the kill. Zibay does get out of range of the EMP so he won't lose his mana. And Toby doesn't have the mana or the cooldown to throw out a stun just yet. Even with the assistance of a cookie. He still has two mangoes on the stick. So if you want it, he can go. Oh, he's going to go right now. Kisses as well. And they can turn around and use that for more because the chrono goes down on top of Pile oh. Eye. We'll find a bonus kill. Chessy and Ace have to run away. And they can't even argue split push and farm efficiency because they're stacked in the same area. Very nice play from Viking. Transitioning it into the mid tower. I, this might just be... This might be Roche. Yeah. Which is crucial, right? Because, you know, you talk about TA. The first Roche is, is yeah. pretty critical. And you see Misery immediately rocketing the Roche. Yeah, scared, that they, scared that they will take it. Shad has the Yasha complete going for the Manta right now. Once he has that Manta, it's going to be quite rough to kill him without Doom, I feel. Because the only, the only real control that they have is like the Oracle Snare and uh, Hookshot, which is not great. And the and Silence, of course. I feel like this game doesn't necessarily get easier for Doom as goes on, because what you'll probably see coming out of Void is a stats resistance build, right? I don't see this as a, a BKB build. 
necessarily. No. I think he didn't, he might just go damage. Oh. Paris is like my farm. You have tower, me have creeps. Good trade. Goodbye. Ace is pretty farmed though as well. That's true. Still vulnerable though. That's that's kind of the worrying fact. I and mean, we've just you know we saw last time the threat of these kisses. And if you have a look at Aramis right now, <laughs> I was wondering he's... where their initiation is gonna come from. But don't worry, he's already ahead of us on that one. I would like to see a blink come out of Toby. Um, Don't need it, mate. I'm just gonna get spit deep. Oh, they show bot. This oh, is huge. What? Especially they with alacrity, this is so fast. Yeah, they won't be in time to contest this Roche, I think. They're moving now. Zebe did find the haste rune. You just you can't get in. Where's your injection point? Like, look, oh. they're like, okay, we see you, Clockwork. We have vision. They're going to break out of the pit right now. Cookie, not in the right place. Hookshot in, drags in Toby, but do you really want to be there? Needs to be careful. Oh, he got, drags he got himself the onto the high ground. False promise is going to come out. He doesn't get the Oracle kill, trying to bring down Misery in time. We have to do so. Kisses, move forward on Ace. In the meantime, they do bring down Doom. The buyback's going to come out. Chess is trying to arrive on the outpost. Moving in, looking for the kill on the cellar. We'll be able to bring him down, but now they're ignoring him and moving in for more. They find the kill on the Oracle. Double buyback out from five men. They need to find more for this, though. Yeah, you get rid of Chaos Knight, but... Without an additional kill, I don't know if you confidently walk into that pit right now. Ah, uh, they have Doom. I think they can. Okay, uh, Jesse's got it. Yeah, he's like, screw this. You warmed it up. Now let me take over. Yeah, it's super hard to contest this right now for Viking, but they got a lot of uh, out of that. And uh, <laughs> TA is not the best Aegis carrier, I feel. Like, if, if you can kill her once, you can probably kill her twice. Yeah, the, the more concerning part is now, because you had to expend those buybacks before the fact, your counter initiation is gone, right? Like, Doom, I mean, he wasn't going to blink this game, but he has the ability to run in, throw Doom out, break the fight. Clockwork, though, that's the bigger one. Now, when he dies, he's going to be nap time for a long time. Oh. Which might be soon, actually. You know, Boom has just put on all the, you know, the famous kind of shark chasing tracks he's like ready to run this boy down i would like to point out that the vision is like completely mirrored for both teams <laughs> like they have the same vision in the same areas <laughs> so there's the <laughs> five man has really good vision of the the, di the radiant jungle and viking from the the river and the dire jungle which is why he can confidently make this move in. He sees Misery. Cobble goes down. I mean, it's looking likely he should die here. He's trying to move out quick enough. Sunstrike. Sidestep by Misery. Meanwhile, Toby is going in. No, it's oh, not going to be good, though. Boom's been recalled over. Highlight die. Oh. You're not a frontliner. What are you doing here? He just wants to cast some spells, but he can't. And Chessie's in way too deep. You mentioned it. If you can kill him once, you can kill him twice. And Toby... I mean, you could arm the toggle with me, but he's going to life steal up. The Chrono, meatballs, I hope you like Italian, Jesse. What a play from Celery, getting a two-man Centaur Stomp to start that engagement. Actually completely splitting off Jesse from the rest of his team. Like, uh, Oracle just died because of it, and uh, Ace had to disengage. Super big. They used the Phantasm, so they're, they're just going to transition that into a bottom lane push. I mean, yeah, it's, it's so low cooldown. Look at Phantasm's cooldown. They're going to have it again in time to hit this tower, if need be. This is the scary part set. about Chaos Knight these days. And it's a catapult wave, so this is going to be quite fast. I'm kind of curious to see if Five Men wants to defend it. They don't have to, so they're quite weak. It would be a bold move, Con. I wouldn't advise. Especially with this hefty beast moving towards you. Toby's like, yo, give me some of the club. Moving in, hook shot on top of him. Drow on the side is going to be hit up by the tornado. It's going to buy enough time for Toby to hit the phantasm. Dragon on ace. Two seconds done. EMP as well. Moving in. False promise forced out. Four stuff will get him away, but he's ruined on the side. And now the dragon, the disarm comes out of Chessie. He can't stand a fight. The biggest fear for this lineup is those Heaven's Alpha disarms because once they're on you, what do you do? Nothing. Looks like they're only going to lose Celery here, but Chad is looking out for his fellow Dutchman here. No man left behind. Meanwhile, in Aramis land. Yeah, he's getting his uh, his agonims. Oh, he's dead. 
Mm, this is an ambitious <laughs> TP. <laughs> Uh. Chat. <laughs> Chat's like, you greedy piece of crap. <laughs> Take my tip. I'd be careful, Chad. I mean, when he's got when he's got his axe, you know, if you're rude to him, you might be the one going in. Although I'm not sure Chad would care, considering Chrono's going to be available in 40 seconds again. Yeah, and Toby is rapidly approaching that Heaven's Halberd. I mean, so that's going to make... Well, that's the ridiculous part, right? Because you've got the chop as well. I mean, that chop lasts so long because of this build that I actually thought they'd Heaven's Halberd on his chessy in that fight. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they, they got a lot of tools to deal with the physical damage coming out of five, man. They got the, the Deafening Blast from the Invoker and the, soon the, the Halberd coming out from the, the CK. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be quite hard for them to deal the damage that they have. Exactly. And then it's the case of whoever jumps first is going to be critical here. And then that's why I'm a little bit scared for five men. You know, like, I look at Seabay, he's going for this BKB. It's understandable, but how are you getting into you this stomp very effectively? You know, you, you're almost entirely reliant on misery to get one hell of a good initiation to start these fights. And that's Solar Crest done for Boom. That's going to be such a huge boost for the Void. Void also has his Sanj complete, also heading towards that Halberd. It's going to be super hard for these two range cores to play this game in the coming few minutes once those Halberds do come out. Mm -hmm. Toby almost got the Sanj himself. Uh, yeah, this timing is going to coincide at this rate in the next few minutes, but they're looking to inflate their gold off the back of kills. And Ace might just walk into them here. I mean, maybe. They're going oh, a different they way. They see Pilot Eye. Eh? They ping it. One A through. Hello, five. Time to die. Yeah, nice first hit bash. As you cool. expect. It's nice when you get those. At the end, Pi's like, I'm just going to smash my head against the keyboard and see what happens. Oh! oh. I, wasn't, I wasn't watching and suddenly I just see Toby's icon screeding <laughs> across the map. <laughs> I mean, like, I looked at him and I heard the noise. I was like, that's Ags ready, baby. <laughs> Such a rewarding noise. Like... You know, you dodge the big casualties, but I mean, it's not a big cooldown on Gobble Up. They have their initiation now, and that's the difference I was fearing for them. You can see now, Xibe has queued up the Blink Dagger, but you're 2,000 gold away. You are a Doom. I'll give you credit where credit is due. But that window could be exploited by Viking. It's also quite hard to kill the Void, right? Because you have this, you have Salary behind him with the Hand of God and the Mech. Which is now going to be... Uh... Actually, does that get amplified on the Sanj? I don't think it does at all. I think it does, actually. All healing is amplified, so... Okay. Uh, I would remember I... they tweak the item slightly. But I think it does, yeah. Yeah, that's a... That's a 2200 HP void with 21 armor. Hmm. So what you're telling me is don't try and kill him first. Should we Should we yeah. try and kill... T t no, don't kill Toby first. Um... I think... Boom or Celery should be your targets, but it's it's kind of hard to reach those. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, Celery has... He's definitely not going off the Aramis. <laughs> a huge meat wall of creeps in front of him. Mm -hmm. There's no way in hell you're trying to go for the Snapfire first. 2,000 HP on him already. A goofy smile on his face knowing he's unlikely to die anymore. And this wraparound. Could be fail for five men. They're targeting Shad. Little do they know, someone might be targeting them. Moving in, Doom's gonna be thrown out straight away. Tornado to break up the fight. Does flip on an ace. They're trying to get him out quick enough to heal him up with the mech. Stand on top of him. Shad needs a retreat. They still do have the hand of God to work with, and it looks like he's gonna be able to sustain through at this rate. Zbase BKB is running out soon. The turn around come out. Now Shad can turn and fight. Misery getting low on the side. Jump in. Kiss is coming out. And ace the target. False promise to try and keep him alive. It's gonna end. The disarm is being thrown out, which means he can only use the multi shot. Boom. Being brought low. Chessy over to find him before the match community runs out. But now, Pali Dai dies to Aramis. Aramis will be brought down by Chessy in turn. And Shad needs to retreat away. He already used the Chrono. Maybe not to the biggest effect as they still have Chessy and Ace alive. Celery. Oh. Gonna experience the root. Gonna experience the pain. A bit. A really sloppy fight there, actually, from both sides, I feel. Shad really committing hard on the Doom after he pretty much used everything. Yeah, that was, that was the Bathlon part. I click on him and like, wait, he did actually chrono? And you look back and you go, so Chessie and Ace just get to stand there, huh? 
clicking everything they want to. At least, the bright, at least on the bright side, they didn't lose any vision control as a result of this fight on uh, mm. Viking. So they still have like pretty good vision around this mid area. The sad part is that now you don't have your Chrono, you don't have your Kisses. So, you know, the fact that five men use the Doom, they're going to be confident to actually maybe be able to take a fight. Toby's hunt though. He drags back on Ace. Four stuff to get him away. He has got the Phantasm, so he could just look to dispel this. And there it is. The time violation there as well. Ace, he needs it out and he needs it quick. Moving in, the gobble up to get Boom forward with the cold snap. Hookshot to try and save oh. the tornado. Interrupts EMP. He cogs in his own teammate. That's not what you want. BKB from c but they're just watching. There's nothing he can do from the side. Chessie has the BKB just to run away. And the use of the little shredder is just getting through those refraction charges. The bash full up as well. And Chessie, this magic community is running out. And with it, your chances of survival are gone. I'm in misery locking his teammate in the Thunderdome there with the, <laughs> the horseman of the apocalypse right there. How does that work? It's like, no, guys, we need to leave. It's like, no, this <laughs> is our time. This is my cog's house. Look at it. Oh, oh God. And, and Shad gets the orb of destruction. So it's going to be even oh, harder geez. to get away from him. I mean, I think my favorite part about that, it really does come back to this building Seabay. Like I said, I don't blame him for the BKB, but that sad wow, wow, wow moment as you just watch the Doom stare from outside the cogs, feeling left out of the whole experience. Oh, good lord. I want, I'm curious if they can force these buybacks. They have the Doom online, so it's, it's quite scary for a Viking. I mean, it's, it's an alacrity faces void they, they'll at least get a tower if they don't get a buyback and they you mean you mentioned that doom they've got the chrono again in 10 seconds they've got the kisses ready they've even got the gobble up so there's a lot more things i've pointed out for the side of viking than they have for five men yeah uh, this, just, uh, this is this uh this uh this is the invoker build we've been seeing recently a lot like the class wax with the solar crest just to buff up that that really beefy plus one like that uh, we've seen that og play it with the pa which was even more insane with the the post five Magnus, and they just throw everything on the on mid one, and then this is kind of the same thing here. This void is going to be massive. I expect uh, Viking to go like Lotus Orb at one point. That way, it's like almost impossible to siege when you siege with the void to just jump him with the Doom. Mm -hmm. The the painful part for five men as well is this is not a one core lineup, bro. Like Toby, he's proven why this hero is so lethal with less gold. Than the two cores of five men, his impact is equal. That's the threat. That's the danger whenever you go up against the Chaos Knight. Is yeah, he might farm a little bit slower. Yeah, he's maybe a little bit more reliant on kills. But the impact of every item pickup is higher than most heroes in Doha. Exactly. And then you can just transition the distance this into a Roche. It's gonna be respawning soon. And they got Phantasm. the map control to do this. Well, Phantasm was used, so they need to be a little bit careful about their approach to this. And you already see the five men. They're hoping someone will come to this bot side of the map. Keep them company. Oh, and a DD. I, w I would like to see uh, Viking pull an OG here. And just bait the Roche. And mm -hmm. try and to... I think five men might bait themselves towards it. I mean, you've got a DD on the TA. It's got to be mighty tempting. This TA, it's hard though. 600 damage almost. When the draw is near her. That, that's a fair point, but then I'll just click on uh, the CK with his Heaven's Halberd and the Void with <laughs> his Heaven's Halberd and <laughs> the chop from the Invoker. Yeah, and he's a yeah, Shad has the, the Scotty queued up now. So it's going to be impossible for those heroes to play the game. Oh, Lacrity. Movement about the back line. Oh, no, no, the blink. Chessie gets out the Chrono. But Misery, he goes in with his hook shot. So they can still oh, down Kisses on the back line. They find Pylite die as well. Seabase BKB not doing much just yet. Toby the Phantasm looking for it. Drags in on Ace. Four stuff to get himself away. They have to turn around and deal with Seabase instead. And they'll do exactly that. They melt straight through him. Dragging now. Ace is sacrificed himself alongside Seabase. He's going to be brought down. Misery also dies. Chessy running for the high ground. Yeah, it's a failed chrono, but not a failed fight. As Viking, they say, is this your base? I think we like the look of it. We're gonna buy this from you. Chessy, die. GG comes out. They know it's over right there. Viking with a 2-0 victory. What a what a gobble up from Aramis. Hitting the stun on the, the Oracle, basically guaranteeing they win that fight. No saves for the course and they just topple over on five man. I mean not as insane of a game for the same reasons as game one, but once again. One of the critical patterns that we notice between game one and game two is this snapfire impact that you just mentioned from that final fight.
I've heard some people say, like, how do you deal with this axe? Is it going to be enough? Do we have to beat back some element of the perks you get from it? Is it the cooldown? Is it the travel time? It's, I would at least like to see them add some sort of effect so you can, you know, understand what's happening in the fights. Because I have noticed that from a few players as well, as they get thrown off by that ability a lot. Uh, they had, it has an effect. It's the same effect as uh, Doom Devourer. Hmm. It also makes the same sound. So especially when Doom is in the game, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> I mean, it's... I, I don't know. I, what do you think personally? I feel like it... I could see it get tweaked. I think the, the fairest argument I've had is maybe like changing the travel time because it is quite fast. I think maybe the range and the damage should get slightly tweaked. It's so far. It's it's like your entire screen. It's basically like a ho slow traveling hookshot, right? Yeah. And it does 400 damage. Like, <laughs> but like imagine if Clockwork could take his hookshot and just stick... In this game, for example, imagine you could stick Z Bay on the end of it, right? That's that's yeah. the kind of impact we're talking about. And I feel like that that's what it has to come down to, right? Is that Aramis in the POS4 role is doing more for the initiation of Viking than both Z Bay and Misery is able to do as the POS4 and free for the side of five then. Yeah. And I I, I like this this is just uh, I think Compared to last game, I think last game five men had a stronger draft, but this game Viking had a stronger draft, and you see what happens. Like when they get the stronger draft, they just roll them over. Yeah, this is the Viking we used to. Like you know, yeah. game one, there were moments where they had in the back foot, right? This is they didn't get to play the ultra aggressive early game that we used to see him. But this time around is very clean cut. Uh, especially like the amount of tension that Boom soaked in that mid area of the map time and time again. You know, you, you could say that five men were getting gains here and there, but I never felt like it was enough. I never felt like we saw, especially the TA, able to reach that kind of dangerous peak that we're used to around the 20, 25 minute mark. Yeah, I didn't really feel this TA's impact this game. Like, timings were a bit slow and they, they didn't really have the lineup to enable the TA pick, I feel. Like, it, I can't from Like, maybe one fight she was able to actually, like, freely play the fight and otherwise there's just so much control on the side of Viking, like, that... The, Tornadoes coming out, the cold snaps, the the bashes from the void, the cookies, all that kind of jazz, and it's just so hard to play the game for the TA there. Yeah, and as a result, we have uh, a victor here. That does mean we have to say goodbye to five men. This was a lower bracket game, and although they fought well in this series, especially in that game one, in the end, Viking they beat their asses in with a two zero victory to continue on through. But we've got more elimination games ahead of us. That's right. We're not done. You see, we are sick, sadistic, maniacal maniacs. Because saying maniac once wasn't enough, I had to use another word for it. Because up next, because we're clearly EU bias, um, it's only fair that we kill a CIS team as well. Khan versus Hellraisers up after the break. Another elimination series. One of these teams will go home, tears in their eyes, but... Ultimately, reflect on the fact that how will I go home if I'm already home because we're playing not on LAN, you idiot. But we'll get to that after a short break.